Hello, my friends. D.L. Anderson here. Welcome back to Transformation by Truth podcast as we share the truth concerning these last days and what you must do to save yourself from the violent times that are just ahead. Today's podcast is a word of truth accounting of the end times. The end is coming. The end is near. Today's podcast is entitled End Times 374, an intro to compliance. The power to keep you in line with the standards of holiness. The podcast objectives are provide a definition for compliance, analyze the primary illustration of compliance, and reveal the primary objective of compliance. This lesson contains timelines and other visuals. Therefore, if you are listening to the podcast, I advise you to watch the video version on our website or YouTube or request a PDF of the lesson so you can add the visual effect. Will you comply? Shalom, my beloved brothers and sisters, and welcome to day 143 of our exposition of lawlessness. In the most recent podcast, we revealed the three degrees of obedience, enter, compliance, conformance, and transformation. In this podcast, we will analyze compliance, i.e., the fundamental degree of obedience. I will begin by providing a definition for this pivotal degree. My definition, compliance is the act of acquiescing, the tendency to yield readily to another in accordance or cooperation, the strain of an elastic body expressed as a function of the force producing the strain. Now, from a physical perspective, I would compare compliance to an elastic suit. In its original state, elastic material has the unique quality of being both flexible and firm, a quality which reflects the dual nature of compliance. On the one hand, compliance is designed to impress the spiritual model of Yahushua Messiah upon the chosen elect. And on the other hand, it is designed to be flexible, allowing us to go against the grain. Now, the question we should chiefly entertain is, why is there a flexible side to compliance? The Father's desire for us to be conformed to the spiritual image and likeness of Yahushua Messiah is quite clear. Ergo, why does he allow for compliance, i.e. the foundation of obedience, to have a flexible nature? The answer is sure. It exists because we are not forced to be conformed to Yahushua Messiah. As I have said before, and often, we must choose to comply with the Father's will. And thus, the flexible nature of compliance accounts for this reality. My dear friends, this is a very crucial element of compliance you must appreciate and understand. To wit, as a portion of compliance is indeed flexible, it allows us to go against the prescribed form. And yet, the more we go against the form, the more we will stretch out the spiritual material of compliance. As a result, the form will gradually be lost as the elastic suit of compliance forfeits its true value, which is in its firmness. Now, the gradual loss 
of the prescribed form is a testament to the work of compliance having failed in our lives. This is why compliance is the fundamental degree of obedience and why it is so crucial in the grand scheme of this leading interval of holiness. To wit, if we fail to accept the curtailment of our degrees of freedom and execution, while we pursue perfection, we will never succeed in being obedient in all things. Thus, the principal question concerning obedience is simply this, will you comply? The reward we are obtaining. Now, it goes without saying that all the degrees of holiness are crucial, for you cannot succeed your quest if you fail to master one. And yet, there are some degrees that have a more prominent role than others. Consider the human body. It has many organs and systems that work together. And yet, some of these have more critical functions than others. For example, your liver versus your wisdom teeth. Along these lines, compliance is, in fact, one of the more prominent degrees of holiness. To it, I would label compliance as a super feature for the following reason, which I will offer as an interest point. As the elastic suit of holiness, compliance is the primary piece of spiritual clothing we wear in our pursuit of perfection. We know this because obedience is the primary application and affliction of faith. And faith, we determined, is a no comfort zone. Ergo, the fundamental degree of obedience must be designed to make us uncomfortable. My dear friends, you must get this right off the bat. The father is telegraphing the fact that the quest for holiness is not intended to be comfy cozy. And so if it is a cakewalk you are after, you are surely in the wrong place. You, my friend, are running the wrong race. All the same, this reality does not suggest the purpose of the Father's will is to make us uncomfortable. Quite the contrary, the purpose of the Father's will is to save us from perishing and from experiencing the eternal damnation of sin. Hence, the question of the hour is this. Why will we notice a sharp increase in our levels of discomfort as we initiate our quest for holiness? The answer is sure. It is because we are in our worst spiritual shape in the leading frames of our quest. Therefore, the levels of discomfort will be high and they will continue to be high until we begin to grow into a healthy spiritual state. Look at it this way. When an athlete prepares for the Olympics, working his or her best to achieve peak physical conditioning, they will push themselves very hard, treating their bodies very harshly for the hope of faring well in the Olympics. Now, ask yourself this question. How comfortable are they in the beginning, i.e. physically, will they endure countless hours of intense training? The answer is sure. They are not comfortable at all, for they, at this early juncture, are in the worst physical shape they will be in. My dear friends, I can attest to this matter, having experienced terrific discomfort, soreness, and the like, as I work to achieve physical goals related to endurance, speed, and strength. 
and on a much lesser scale than Olympic athletes. And I am sure many of you can say the same. The question is, why do we do it? The answer is because we value the prize at the end of the journey. Whether we are seeking Olympic gold or a healthy physical state, we endure significant measures of physical discomfort because we perceive the trade-off is a net positive. This perception is validated as we progress our training, for we will begin to see various physical gains and growth. These will inspire us to continue investing quality time in exercise to achieve our ideal physical state. Then again, we will no longer perceive this investment from the perspective of the discomfort involved. Quite the contrary, we will now begin perceiving this investment from the perspective of the reward we are gradually obtaining. Compliance is falling in line. Now, achieving an ideal physical state is not a simple matter, and thus, we will need a coach. That is, someone who, A, understands the path we must follow to achieve the prize we seek, and B, is committed to keeping us on that path, pressing toward the mark. Besides a coach, we are also in need of a trainer. A trainer is a piece of clothing that is used to provide support for a specific activity with a focus on ensuring we maintain the appropriate posture required to endure the stress and the strain of the activity. This speaks clearly to the purpose of compliance. To wit, compliance is our trainer. It is a spiritual force which keeps us in the way of holiness no matter how uncomfortable we become, which is why the spirit has led me to label it as an elastic suit. Here lies the inflection. To wit, your trainer will empower you to acquire the spiritual form required to align you with every standard of holiness. In effect, your trainer will set the tone for how you must walk in the way of holiness. And as you follow it, you will no longer experience terrific measures of discomfort and stress. Quite the contrary for your trainer is unique to you. It has been designed according to your destiny, and thus, the longer you wear it, you will find it to be a perfect fit. Now, this speaks to the primary objective of compliance in our quest. Vis-a-vis, -vis, compliance compels us to fall in line with every standard required to keep us steadfast in the way of holiness. Along these lines, every occasion in which you begin to deviate from the way is accompanied by a sharp spiritual resistance, which results in discomfort, which is a clear indicator that you are diverging from the beaten path. You, my friend, are getting out of line. Here lies the inflection, the danger, and a warning I have shared with you in prior podcasts. And yet, as it is so crucial to this lesson, I will restate it. And this is one I'd advise you to bookmark. The power of compliance is in the original form of the elastic suit. And thus, every time, we go against the spiritual grain of compliance, we are disfiguring our elastic suit and forfeiting its value. Here lies the danger. 
vis-a-vis, when you disfigure your elastic suit by refusing to comply with the will of Elohim, you are opening the door to reignite a war you recently won with doubt. And this war, my friend, will be seven times harder for you to win this time around. Now, I don't think I can offer a clearer warning than that. Remember, the mission is to reign over doubt. You've taken care of the first half of your business by winning your battles with despair, distrust, and self-reliance. But your work is not done. Quite the contrary. All you have done is defeat the invading army. And now, now you must defeat the enemy nation. You, my friend, must defeat the fatherland. And that begins with unlocking the power of compliance to eliminate the spirit of non-compliance. And I will show you how in the upcoming podcast. Now, here is the final word. The one sure way to prevent decline is to give yourself to falling in line. Brothers and sisters, it would be different if we knew the way into eternal life or if we could, by our own power and might, enter in. But we can't. And so we really don't have a choice. We can fulfill the desires of our creator, and live. Or we can disregard them and die. Here again, the choice is yours. And yet, I recommend that you choose life. I recommend that you comply. Now, here is today's assignment. Meditate on the word you have heard today. And as always, ask the Father to reveal the truth to you. For the children of Elohim live by conviction. And if he has not convicted you, or if you had not heard him concerning these matters, you should pray until you do. Today, I want you to meditate on the word of truth I shared and prepare yourself for a powerful message as we show you the first of three steps you must take to seal the deal in forever maintaining your reign over disobedience and doubt. Now, here is what's next. We completed today's podcast, End Times 374, an intro to compliance. And the next podcast is entitled, End Times 375, Your Victory Over Noncompliance. I will post this podcast on November 22nd, 2024. Until then, my friends, continue to be led by the Spirit of Elohim. Continue to watch. Continue to pray, continue in fasting, and most of all, continue to be focused, for the end is coming, the end is near.